Hello, Internet. We're rounding you up because this is Internet Roundup. Our uh, Stuff You Should Know Internet Clubhouse on the Web. That's right. That's the parenthetical title. <laughs> All right. You should put that up there. Okay. So uh, each week we... Is it up there? I think so. <laughs> each week we get together and uh, just sort of peruse the web and find fun and exciting things. And actually... These are neither fun nor exciting, <laughs> but they are informative. Yeah, let's file this one under yesterday's news Okay, that we just found out about. Yeah, about the Better Business Bureau. Yeah, so in our uh, patent episode, we mm-hmm. were talking about like some patent, um, uh, like inventor help group. Yeah. And we we're like, well, the Better Business Bureau says that it's an, it got an A rating, so <laughs> they must need be a legitimate business. Yeah. Somebody wrote in and was like, dudes, don't you know, like the Better Business Bureau is pay to play. Oh, is that where you got this from? Yeah, somebody wrote it in to, to let us know about the Better Business Bureau. So in 2010, the new show 2020, I don't know if you guys are familiar or not, um, did an expose on the Better Business Bureau where basically there were businesses out in Los Angeles that were reporting that they had like they they had a complaint against them in, in like five years previously. Yeah. And they still had a C rating even though they'd resolved the thing. Sure. And the Better Business Bureau had said, you know, you can get this up to an A yeah. if you become an accredited member <laughs> for like and pay 400 bucks. 425 bucks. Yeah. So that means that these people who were, if you went on the web and looked up their business, you'd find a C. If they would pay the Better Business Bureau, you'd look up and they they would be they would have an A. That's paying to play. The Better Business Bureau is not supposed to do that. Well, no, they're supposed to be uh, the trustworthy place to go to find out if you can trust businesses. Yes. So the whole thing is... I don't know if it's irony or not, but it's, it's... It's fairly ironic. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, they were sort of busted, though, when a blogger um, submitted a business uh, called Hamas <laughs> yeah. as a terrorist organization and yeah. paid the money and got an A-plus rating. Yeah. Um, and then somebody else uh, set up a Better Business Bureau account for the neo-Nazi group Stormfront. Yeah. They got an A rating because they paid the 425 bucks. A non-existent sushi restaurant. Yep. A rating because they paid the 425 bucks. So there, it was very much proven and then very much exposed on 2020. Yeah, and we should say this is the LA chapter. Okay, so so supposedly yes. just the LA chapter. That was 2010. Yeah. We looked to see what happened after that, and in 2013, after a three-year-long blue ribbon panel investigation, <laughs> the Better Business Bureau decided to take the tactic where they would blame it all on the LA chapter. Yeah, they expelled the Southern California chapter, BBC, or I'm sorry, BBB of the Southland, mm-hmm. and uh, basically they started saying, "Well, no, this is." The, the Southland chapter said, this is what you guys told us to do. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and, the, and the BBB says, no, 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 we didn't tell you to do that. Yeah, they said they were following national policy. Yeah. That accredited members got A's and you recruit accredited members by saying, you want an A? Give us some money. It's and pretty the, hinky. the national organization said, no, no. And uh, yeah, it, the, it is pretty hinky. We were looking up to see if they'd made any changes to yeah. their policy. And apparently the change they made was just to blame it all on L.A., yeah, they were definitely made the scapegoat, so uh, I'm going to keep following this, actually. We're, we'll follow up at some point. Yes. But, yeah, that really stinks, man, because that's where you're supposed to go to trust something. Yeah. You know? Like, I'm totally disillusioned right now. I have no idea what's going on. I don't know which way is up. Like, where are we? I have no idea. So, uh, Chuck, let's go from sunny L.A. <laughs> to snowy Kentucky. <laughs> yeah, I thought this was pretty neat, because here is a little factoid I did not know. Uh, the National Weather Service, when you hear snowfall amounts, they rely on volunteers to report that stuff. Yeah. I never knew that. I just figured they had a Like dude. an army of people? Well, at least like one guy that drives around and measures snowfall, <laughs> you know? In their region, at least. <laughs> Not all over the country. Can you imagine that <laughs> terrible job? Yeah. Yeah. Not good. Although, I guess if you like driving and being outdoors and wearing galoshes. Yeah, sure. That would be the job <laughs> for you. So, yeah, they rely on um, basically citizen weather hounds. And they there's a, um, a, a basically a how-to, snowfall measuring procedures yeah. on the Jackson, Kentucky National Weather Service Forecast Office website. And um, this applies anywhere. But uh, for this particular one, it gives you links of where to send your reports in. So sure. basically, if you go to NOAA or the National Weather Service and type in, like, snow reporting, they're going to tell you how to get your info to them. Yeah. 
And but, I get the feeling people that enjoy doing this are like really into it. Oh yeah, totally. You know, the volunteers. Like people who watch yeah. the Weather Channel like all day. Well, I watch a lot of Weather Channel actually. Okay, so maybe you should start measuring the snow. Here in Atlanta. Here in Atlanta. We got half an inch. Right. <laughs> For like the last three years. Yeah. So one of the tips they use is uh, is not to measure on grass because mm-hmm. snow can be inflated by uh, by blades of grass. Uh, they say to try and get a spot about twenty to thirty feet away from your house on like a wooden deck. Right. So you know you obviously aren't going to measure like under a tree or something. You want it to be kind of wide open mm-hmm. to get a pretty accurate measurement. Or pick the table out in the open would work too. I bet you these people actually have built their little measuring station well yeah there's something called uh snowboards and you want two of them not the kind of snowboards that you ski on no this is a different kind of snowboard this is a measuring device <laughs> it's a little more boring than a, a, the other kind of snowboard it's super boring but basically it's just a flat board i think they suggest a 16 by 16 piece of wood yeah that you lay out and um you have two of them for for a pretty good reason. You want to take two different measurements. Mm -hmm. One is new snowfall. Yeah. And so you're going to clean that off after every measurement. And then after it snows, you're going to measure it. And you measure it down to the closest tenth of an inch, I think. Yeah. And they say if there's been a lot of wind, you may want to measure it a couple of times and uh, move it around in a couple of different places. Right. Or have more than one, maybe. Yes. And then there's snow depth. And so after you take that new snowfall measurement, Brush off your snow and set it back out. Yep. Clean as a whistle to start over again. Because all you want is the newest yeah. accumulation. You take your little uh, sip of brandy. <laughs> right. <laughs> Do it again. Yeah. Um, and then there's snow depth. And that one is this board that you leave out all year long and you just keep measuring and measuring and measuring. It's the accumulation. Yeah. And that's the, the sexy number. And you don't need to measure that to within a uh, tenth of inches. I think they just said down to the nearest inch is good enough for that. That's right. And then you uh, write it down on a piece of paper, you fold it up, put it in your front pocket, you get in your car, you try to start it, you find the battery doesn't start, you go into your garage, you get your jumper cables, you get your wife's car out, you hook the two up, finally get your other car started, put the jumper cables back, and then you drive to the National Weather Service office, give them the piece of paper, and then they tell you that you can just email it from now on. That's right. And then you go back to your house and you read Reader's Digest for the rest of the day. That's right. Yeah. So pretty neat. Thank you, citizens, for measuring snowfall because we all like to hear about those crazy, uh, you know, eight feet of snow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so thanks, people. <laughs> yep. Thank you, Storm Chasing News Town. And we will see you next time on uh, Internet Roundup. That's right.